tonight, council members discuss a resolution on those armed militia members in recent protests, hear why some say it appears to be a violation of the law. Plus, harsh new criticism from Dr. Bob Lutz as he sheds new light on the effort to remove him from his position as a Spokane health officer. While the weather to start this month starts out plenty warm, of course, we'll get our big changes by later on this week in the form of wind, rain, and perhaps some snow. Private property can be uh, mended, private property can be rebought and sold. A human life cannot. Well, tonight the Spokane City Council met to discuss the issue of armed militias at downtown protests. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremt News at 11. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hello there, everyone. I'm Regina On. Well, the city of Spokane has officially condemned armed militias gatherings at protests in downtown Spokane. So Washington law states no organized body other than recognized organizations of the state are allowed to gather publicly with firearms. Well, this evening, city council members voted in favor of staying true to those guidelines. Krem 2's Brandon T. Jones explains. In the aftermath of protests this summer, groups of armed people patrolled downtown with firearms claiming they were protecting businesses. It turns out those exact actions didn't sit well with several Spokane leaders, and that was made clear in tonight's city council meeting. I am fully supportive of this, and I think just generally it comes down to, for me, um, how much do we care about human life versus public property? or pri private property. Back in June, 16 elected officials in the Spokane area condemned militia groups from forming downtown. Through a joint statement that included Mayor Nadine Woodward, they referred to the individuals as armed vigilantes. Uh, are not protecting property, but rather they're there to intimidate protesters and they are open carrying in unsafe ways. During tonight's city council meeting, several people expressed their concern over what took place. Business owners and concerned citizens shared their thoughts on why it portrays Spokane in a negative light. After weeks of trying to figure out how to properly handle these kind of situations, a resolution was passed that will officially denounce any of these groups from forming again in Spokane. People armed in groups, displaying those arms, marching together, working together, and intimidating people. And back uh, over 100 years ago, the U.S. Supreme Court said that is not protected by the Second Amendment. The goal of this resolution isn't to limit rights that allow open carry. Instead, it's to help law enforcement identify potential threats built on radical motivation. Recently, the Spokane Police Department stated they would need to establish probable cause before prosecution. I'm going to support this because I want to move forward. I want some answers from our police department. I want answers from our legal team. I think they can come up with that. They've done it before. I have confidence they can do it again. Now that the resolution is passed, anyone in violation of forming an unlawful militia will face a misdemeanor charge. From Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crim 2 News. And new criticism tonight from Dr. Bob Lutz as he sheds light on the effort to remove him in his position as Spokane's health officer. Dr. Lutz has released another statement on his employment status with the regional health department. That statement reads in part, I understand from media reports that a SRHD board meeting will be scheduled to address the status of my employment, although I have not been personally advised of such. I intended to await that meeting before commenting further as I wanted to address the issues directly with the board. He goes on to say, however, recent statements from the health district contained inaccurate and misleading information concerning my separation from employment that needed to be clarified. To be clear, Amelia Clark fired me last Thursday. He continues, she told me in a meeting last Thursday afternoon that I was terminated effective immediately, requested my identification, keys, cell phone, and laptop, and told me I could contact HR to retrieve my personal items. She also provided me with a written severance offer stating that I had until the next day at 4 p.m. to resign and sign that agreement. Well, that offer of severance required me to waive my claims against the SRHD in exchange for three months pay and a confidentiality agreement preventing me from disclosing the settlement terms. I refuse to accept that severance offer as I do not think Ms. Clark's actions were justified or lawful. And he adds, as things stand, I was told I was fired and have been denied access to my office phone files, records, and my computer since last Thursday. I do not know who is currently acting as the SRHD's public health officer. And coming up in about 15 minutes, we'll hear from former Spokane health officer Dr. Kim Thorburn on her take on the board's attempt to fire Dr. Lutz and how this situation 
situation kind of feels like deja vu to her. All right, let's switch gears now and take a live look right now at the White House. Tomorrow is Election Day. Crazy to believe it's already here. Americans <laughs> choosing between incumbent President Donald Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden. It'll be an exciting day for sure. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't voted in Washington or Idaho, you still do have some time to make your vote count. In both Washington and Idaho, people can register in person today and tomorrow and cast their vote. In Washington, you do need to register at your local elections office or local voting center. Otherwise, the state is entirely vote by mail. So make sure your vote counts. Ballots must be postmarked by 8 p.m. tomorrow or in a USPS collection bin before the last pickup time. You can also track ballots at votewa.gov. Meantime, over in Idaho, all ballots must be received by 8 p.m. tomorrow, regardless of the postmark. Polls are open tomorrow from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Some counties, though, can opt to open polls at 7 a.m. And the long, as long as you're in line, by the way, by 8 p.m., you can still vote. People can still register in person to vote. You must provide proof of residence and a photo ID at a polling center. You must have lived in Idaho for the past 30 days to register. For more information, just visit IdahoVoters.gov. All right, there's some sports news tonight. WSU fans, you officially have your new starting quarterback and its true freshman, Jaden Delora. Our Brennan Green joins us more from tonight's press conference. Yeah, Rolovich was questioned a few times before he coughed up the goods and confirmed to us that Jaden Delora would become the first ever true freshman quarterback to start for the Cougs in a season opener. He then detailed how Jaden won the job. When he got off the plane, I think he had a couple missions. Where am I going to live and, and where's the playbook and when are we going to start practice? Let's hope the first mission has been accomplished. The other missions have seemed to fall into place for Jaden Delora. Good arm strength, good understanding, good timing, good zone manipulation of defenders. Um, gets the ball out quick, has some accuracy, has some ability to, you know, make some plays off off, off script. Um, yeah, and his competitive nature. I think he came here for a reason. I'm sure this is something he's dreamed of his whole life, and you know, I expect him to take advantage of it. Dolores seemed like the clear front runner all camp as he had the best scrimmage numbers for the team. In the Cougs' two scrimmages, Delora went 20 of 27 for 179 yards and four touchdowns overall. Cam and Cooper seemed like the runner up as he went 11 of 22 for 171 yards and one touchdown. However, he also had three interceptions. Rolovich said the quarterback battle was difficult for him for a lot of reasons. It was close, almost to a point somewhat unfair because I don't think they got the opportunities that they would have gotten in a regular yearly cycle, but uh, the clock is ticking. And now the clock is ticking for game day at Oregon State. Rolovich won't hesitate if his starter doesn't bring the goods. you got to perform well because he's got, he's got two other guys right behind him on his butt. Delora did have a bit of a leg up as he ran the run and shoot, the offense that Rolovich runs. In high school, the Hawaii native caught Rolo's eye when he was just a sophomore. Rolovich offered Delora before Mike Leach even knew he existed. That's it for sports. Well, not much to complain about weather-wise today because we saw almost 60 degrees, clear skies, and a whole lot of sunshine today. It felt really nice out there. Oh, and Thomas Patrick joining us now from the Outdoor Weather Center. So, Thomas, can we expect this for the rest of the week? Some of the week. <laughs> not all of the week, though. You don't want to get too spoiled when it comes to weather this nice in November. But, yeah, I got a chance to stretch my legs. I think a lot of people took advantage of the clear skies, the sunny skies, the fairly mild temperature, again, for November standards. And we got some nice days ahead of us. But a reminder that maybe some changes are not too far away. But any of this rain that you see on Doppler radar right now is going to stay well off to the west. So doesn't look like we're going to get much change temperature-wise for a couple days today. It was mostly in the 50s in the 60s down on the Palouse as well. A very warm start to the month here and that does continue for a couple days, but we will start to slide at least a couple rain chances in our forecast for a couple of the days this upcoming week, including for tomorrow. Cold start to the day. It is November. No surprise there. 50s again for the afternoon, but look for showers later on in the day. Pretty late in the day. The first of a few rain chances throughout the course of this week, but by the time we get to the weekend, much colder temperature wise. 
skies and there is a big transition day, especially on Thursday that's going to be taking place across the area. So coming up, I'm going to show you just how strong some of the winds will be this week when you can expect that rain and if it could get cold enough to snow once again heading into the weekend. A lot to cover coming up in a few minutes. Oof. All right, wind, rain and possible snow. Are you yeah. ready, Mark? <laughs> I think I'm going to enjoy tomorrow with the 60 degree temperatures, right? Me too, me too. All right, well, let's still ahead here tonight. Spokane Public Schools just held a webinar for first grade parents. We do have everything you need to know coming out of that meeting. Well, frustrating is one word. And coming up later on, we'll hear from Dr. Kim Thorburn. She once served as a Spokane Regional Health Officer. We'll hear her take on the situation with Dr. Bob Lutz. Stay with us. We're back after this.